I think what God has been saying to me, well, he sent three things this week that were very significant for us as a church. The first was this, was that he is not surprised by this season. God is not surprised. And while that might sound really obvious, it was helpful to remember when we were having church as we knew it, six months, a year ago, etc. He knew what was coming. He knows what's coming this winter. He knows what it will look like in two years' time. The second thing he was saying to us is that he has solutions to problems. He's very creative. Holy Spirit is very creative. So people keep suggesting to me the things we can't do or the obstacles we, are, we will have. And I find myself as a leader just withdrawing with him and saying, Holy Spirit, show us what we can do. And the third thing he's been showing us is that there is a harvest to be had as we worship him, as we encounter the presence of God. And it's vital to reach people for God that we, I guess, are meeting God ourselves. It ultimately is our responsibility to choose to align our hearts and our, and our actions in worship towards God. So um, uh, one of the things we often encourage people is that we're actually missionaries and we're worshippers, every person, everywhere, every day. You have to find out how it works in the everyday. Uh, and, and so, our, you know, we've been worshipping in the kitchen, we've been worshipping in the front room. Uh, OK, so we can't come together with, with a lot of people, but you can, you can worship from your phone in the car or at work. And I've hear, heard some tremendous stories about people who've learned to, to engage with the presence of God who is always with us. Um, you know, when they've got a half an hour break in the middle of their hospital shift and so on, they've, they've gone online and it's there to help them. But ultimately, it's, it's about me. It's about me choosing to come close to God. And, and, and that's what worship is. It's offering. It's an offering of ourselves. And it's, it can't be dependent upon whether there's a band, whatever, to help us. It's a heart posture. And we can always worship God. We can always choose to be thankful. It's what the Bible asks us to do, be thankful in all circumstances. I do believe that we have a wide open door right now. We, we've seen that through the life of this church, that people are turning to God during this time of this crisis of COVID-19. Uh, during this lockdown time, we were receiving letters, notification from people online of how they were tuning in, they were encountering God, they were turning to God. They were just little glimpses of the goodies of the kingdom of God. I have found it hard, you know, I would rather be with people. I w there was a grief in me for the corporate in that sense. And yet I knew that people were meeting with God. So I just think we're, we're always missionaries. Uh, what our task is, is to translate the gospel into the, the context that we find ourselves. So how can I be good news today? I think there is a huge opportunity whenever life changes for people that the buzzword at the moment is the new normal and uh, part of me wants to adapt to the new normal part of me wants to not accept the way things are and pray for a breakthrough in our circumstances because I do believe as the church we are meant to meet together we are meant to love people and touch people etc so I do pray that that would change and yet in this new normal in the instability of it uh, people's lives are shaken, they're questioning things, they're asking what their life will look like in the new normal. And that is a real opportunity to meet people with the great news that there's a Father in Heaven who really loves you. The short answer to what is God saying about what he's doing in the world is, I don't know. I don't know. Um, he didn't tell me this was coming. Uh, but what I can see is that there's a, in the UK, there's a shaking that's been going on and it's a good shaking. Nobody likes, you know, the hard things that have come like unemployment and, um, uh, well, bereavement and so on. And there's a lot of grief in our nation at the moment for things that have been lost. But that has shaken the, the fabric of our society. And what I'm seeing actually is a, a, new, a renewed openness to spirituality and to the possibility of God and to the need of God. Suddenly there's a new openness. There's an invitation to bring faith into the picture which hasn't really been there for the last probably 20 years. Well I think um, you know this is an opportunity to really boil down the essence of what it is to be the people of God and to be church together. There's lots of things that we uh, were in danger of adding on, uh, which maybe we love or maybe we enjoy, but which don't necessarily help us to be with Jesus, to become like Jesus and to do the things that Jesus does. 
Well, I, I found it um, a huge priv privilege to join some of the, the National Baptist dis uh, discussions uh, with BSG as an accompanier to the BSG team and to serve alongside Lynn Green uh, over the last season. And uh, as I've reflected and listened, I've listened to Lynn's heart in particular as she's uh, preached across this nation calling people to a place of encounter with God, to encountering the fire of God, to come alive in him, and that whole communities would come alive in God. I think she's expressed having this vision of beacons of light, uh, prayer houses across this nation, and that is something that has really resonated with me. We had a kind of emergency, what do we do in lockdown meeting? Uh, that's changing a little bit now that things are changing, but what we what we figured we would do is three things. The first is devotion. We would help Christians to come close to God. The second is discipleship. We would help us to hear what God's word is and to put it into action. And the third is around outreach and mission. We would still be open. We would still find ways to connect with people who are hungry after God because there's a lot of people in that place. I'm also hugely encouraged as I spend time uh, across Baptist World with the brave steps that people are, are doing to engage missionally, thinking of creative ways, churches in unusual places in unusual ways, uh, people just risk-taking for God. And where I think you have hearts to be revived in God and a people willing to take risks for Him, we will move forward and we will see God surprise us in the coming times. What could the Baptist future hold? Uh, well, I think for me, I'm gonna be encouraging us to have a holy boldness. I don't think this is a time to shrink back. Um, I know that it's been a, a season of a level of disorientation for churches. We've had to um, run fast to kind of stay in one place even and to understand what's been going on. I, I also would encourage people that it's time to begin to move past that and to look to the future, what could be, as opposed to what has been. Things are gonna look different, certainly for the, the short-term season to come. Um, and the, the church is a beautiful body. We are in a, a good shape because we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. So when I think of the wider Baptist world, what I long for is I long for this nation to experience God. I long to be part of a revival in the UK. I think it is possible. I think we are at a time where uh, things are so being shaken up to such a degree and people are at a point where they potentially may be open to an invasion of God and to realigning their lives. So I guess my heart is that we as the Baptist Church, which I'm part of, and it's a real privilege, we play our part along with many others to be ready to share the gospel. And just as we've seen in Wesleyan times, in times of the Welsh revival, etc., that we would absolutely give everything to worship Jesus, to encounter him ourselves, and to draw people into this relationship with God, and from there on to be disciples of Jesus. I'd love the Baptist Church of the future to be known for really raising disciples across this nation.